hustle all year, ain't no day off. 25, eight, ain't no day off. Hustle all year, ain't no day off. 25, eight, ain't no day off. No G o la barrieta, puro raps con la pinche neta. Shit on my name, pero me. See, that's what I saw. Man, to be honest with you, yeah, it's, it's one of the biggest reasons I wear it. It's more so just to... People see you. You know what I'm saying? I guess now that I'm trying to treat the music... Because in the beginning, it was like passion. It's, mm -hmm. Well, it still is passion, you know what I'm saying? But as you get older in the career, you know what I'm saying? As you mature, you start to realize that you need to do certain things to be entertaining, you know what I'm saying? Or certain things that can strike people. And even if, like, for example, like you just said, like, you just, you saw me, I'm pretty sure you saw that big ass quarter just hanging there. Like, what the fuck? You know what I saying? was across the whole parking lot, and I could see you were climbing shit, and you had this big ass necklace, and you were out there wrapping your ass off. Yeah, man. That's what I saw. So it was not just the chain, it was also the high energy, yeah. and it was a delivery. And then at the end of all that, I heard the lyrical content. So I knew you were up there saying something and expressing yourself. So when I heard you perform, I said, oh, yeah, that dude, he needs to come through. We need to talk. We need to see who that is. I've never even seen you. I've been around for a while. Like, I started rapping back in the year 2000, and I was with the record label in 2004. So I've already been, like, hustling for a long time. So that day when I met you, they had booked me, right? But it was an outside venue, and it was hot. Man, it was super hot. <laughs> it was super hot. Boy, boy. Right? Am man. I lying or no? Man. It was fucking hot, right? They had, the, they had the shade like this, and it was sunny where you were supposed to be performing. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was. Man, to be honest with you, I feel like I was dying for real because when I got the flyer, they're like, hey, you know, there's an event, you know, Blase, blase, you know, you want to come? I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, whatever, right? I rock with David from TDM. Uh, so when they told me, they told me it was a splat zone. Well, I ain't never heard of splat zone. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm from the hood, you know. Yeah, we yeah. come from, you know, you can't, we don't go to places like that. We can't afford it. So I Google splat zone, and then it's a paintball thing. Right. So I'm like, big, big, I'm like, we're going to go paintballing. You know, we yeah. haven't done paintballing yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I threw on some fucking coveralls, bro, like shit that I do mechanics on, because mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I'm not about to fuck up my good outfits on this, right. you know what I'm saying? And if we're going to perform, cool, we're going to do the performance, <laughs> and after that, we're going to do some paintball, you know? I'm thinking I'm thinking ahead, I'm thinking it's going to be inside, because right. it's a paintball AC, spot, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's an indoor paintball. Mm -hmm. Man, boy. It was hot, right? <laughs> Look, man, the funny thing, I saw you, right, and I was like, I have a mechanic shop, right? Uh -huh. I'm a business owner. So first thing I said, I told my wife, you think he's really a mechanic? I'm gonna go hire him right now. Yeah. <laughs> but this is before you went to go perform because everybody was mingling, taking pictures and all that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I was like, maybe he just thinks he's Michael Myers. I said that, yeah. right? <laughs> Hey, I was there to kill the stage, bro. I'm fucking with you, bro. Let me do an intro real quick. Okay. AKM Publishing, I'm Loke G. We have a special guest here with us today. Tell us, homie, who are you? Man, what's poppin', man? Uh, DZ, the motherfucking Don, El Salve Godfather, Papa Los Poito, however you want to call me, man. I'm here representing the El Salvador. I came from Texas, man. What it is? What's going down in H-Town? Boom. So we're going to start at the beginning, man, because um, my favorite thing to do is to bring artists that I, that I see, that I believe in, right? And I want to tell your story, but you haven't been rapping that long, right? Or am I wrong? Man, to be honest with you, now you know you you you, you you're right. Um, I haven't been public uh, for too long. I I think I decided to go public maybe at the beginning of this uh, last year. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm fairly new as far as writing music. You know what I mean? Like creating my own art in a sense. Uh, I think I started maybe what three four years ago, something like that. Maybe three four years ago, bro. Um, that's about it, man. So it's been like a, maybe like a three, four year maximum. You're pretty young. How old are you right now? Man, I appreciate it. Uh, I get that a lot, but I'm 33 years old, man. Okay, 33 yeah, I'm 33, years old. 33 years young. Yeah, 33 there years you go. Young, you know there you saying? go. So, I, you know, we still got a little bit of time to be able to make a, a good impact, man, with everything that we got coming. And you're from here, from Houston? You're from El Salvador? Man, I'm, I was born in El Salvador. Okay. Uh, I grew up over there till about maybe eight, nine. 
sometime around then I moved over to Houston, man. And then, you know, what I'm saying as a, you know, being an immigrant, you know, I'm coming, you know, you know, the same. We all have the same similar story. You know what I mean? Uh, man, we was just jumping from place to place, man. You know, one one year was Queens Point, the next year was somewhere in, you know, the north side of Houston, north central, and you know what I'm saying, south by Bel Air, Pondering area. You know what I'm saying? All the typical places where where you can kind of find a place as a Hispanic, you know, trying to make it, you know, trying to chase the American dream out here, you know, as a, we were a, a new family out here. So, yeah, man, I, I've been all over Houston, technically, bro. Um, from the time I was eight um, till I graduated high school, man, I was in the city, man, wherever I could go. Yeah. And how was, uh, how was that when you were young? you have any siblings or? Man, um, I do have, I, uh, in El Salvador, I had a, a couple of siblings that I grew up with, you know, had a few cousins and my two eldest brothers. Um, and then when we moved out here, we actually moved out here together. So it was a blessing for me because, you know what I'm saying, it, it, I, I feel like sometimes I think back on it and I'm like, damn, if I would have moved over here, you know what I'm saying, being an eight year old, not knowing the language of the land and don't even have my siblings to depend on, you know what I'm saying, I think that would have been a lot tougher for me. Um, but man, I was blessed. Uh, I was blessed to have them come out here with me, man. We were able to, you know what I'm saying, at least I had a little squad, you know what uh -huh. I mean? Like, didn't know English, didn't know, didn't know much about the country, but but it was it was an amazing experience overall. I mean, coming from El Salvador to, to, to Houston, bro, I mean, it, it was like, it felt like Vegas, you know what I mean? I remember coming over here to Houston and uh, taking my first ride on the, once we got off of Bush Intercontinental, man, and just the overpasses, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, to everyone here, it's just, it's this just regular life, but like, to us, shit, we, we were lucky we had roads in the neighborhoods, you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely a blessing just to be here, you know what I mean? Like a culture shock experience yeah, in the man. highways. Yeah, man, it was crazy, man. The it's buildings, the, thing, the yeah. big buildings, the lights, street lights everywhere. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Street lights everywhere, bro. It, it wasn't lights out at 6 p.m. every day over here when the sun went out. Um, so, it, so it was crazy, man. It was a crazy experience. It was, it was a, definitely a culture shock. Um, over there, everything Salvadorian. You got over here, Mexican, the blacks, the you know what I mean. There's so many different cultures, bro. It, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. It was an absolute uh, crazy experience for me. That's crazy. And you were like raised, I know you said you were raised all over Houston, but mainly your squad here in Houston, you said blacks, Mexicans, is that kind of like man, how to be you honest, gravitated to? Man, I'll, like, I'll be honest with you, uh, in my young years, of course, you know, Latinos, you know what I mean? I think as a, as a Hispanic here in Houston and really in America, and, and I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but if you're, whether you're Salvadorian, Mexican, whatever you are, you saw blood and blood out. You know what I mean? You saw El Padrino, you know what I'm saying? You saw all these movies that you listen to SPM, you know what I mean? The Juan Gotti's and all this. So it's like, just being in Houston alone, like I almost feel like the Latinos or like the Spanish culture is like, is more interconnected now, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you were raised in Houston. Definitely. It, every, turn, every turn you made, SPM was being played. He's the Great you know Wall of China, I say. You can see him from outside of the yeah, the bro, man, and stuff, SPM right? so, and the gold. But it's and cool that you have a, like a mix type of like you're pretty much unique in your in your way that you're not Mexican, you're not. Um, well, I mean, my siblings are half Mexican, bro. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, okay. so it's like I have to embrace it. Like it's, it's, it's when I first me. moved over here to Houston, the problem was I was couldn't find any real Mexican food, right? Because yeah. <laughs> you have to go and everything looks the same, but yeah. it's not. Like yeah. we have so many different regions yeah. and cultures from Mexico down to South America, Central America, and every country is its own little cultures and stuff. So yeah, it, when I lived in San Antonio, it's like San Antonio is its own culture, its own thing. Like they get influences from Texas, yeah. California, and stuff like that, but. It's, totally it's still San Antonio, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You you can tell when you're in San Antonio. And I was raised in the valley, and the valley is like its own little entity. So, I'm culture shocked being in Houston. I can only imagine what you felt like coming from El Salvador. I've never been out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I man. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, I man. It's different, man. So now, um, we can edit this out if you don't want to put it in there, but. Do you have like a passport? Are you able to travel? Or are you? Uh, man, thank God, I've been blessed. Or? Yeah, I've been blessed, man. Uh, 
really, I, I really I took advantage. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, once I grew older, you know, once I got to high school, um, you know, seeing my mom struggle and, and my stepfather uh, struggle a lot, you know, it kind of like woke me up to the fact that I, I needed to do something quick. You know what I mean? So ever since I was a young kid, man, like especially here in Houston, bro, Hustle Town, bro. This is home of the hustlers, you know what I'm saying? You're going to figure out how to get it. So I started learning everything I could learn, bro, on how to make money, whether it be cars, mechanics. So, in fact, I am a mechanic. I'm a pretty damn good mechanic, too. Well, I like to think, you know what I mean? I don't know. My cars, is, my cars are all right. But, uh, but yeah, man, I started picking up everything I could. Um, by the time I got to high school, um, you know what I'm saying, along all the other life, you know, that goes in Houston, um, I started actually trying to figure out how to make uh, legitimate money, you know what I mean? Uh, in a way that I could always like have a savings account or like have a, a, a what is it called, retirement plan. So I kind of hit a roadblock at, at a point in my life very young and I decided to join the military, bro. So I did, uh, I did the army for five years. Okay. So during that time, I took advantage and uh, I went ahead and got my citizenship, man. Okay, I, man. I, I did my time, did what I had to do, Salute, man. Yeah, so man. What was your MOS? Man, I, I went in as a 94 hotel. Okay. Back in the day, um, that that was, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but it's like, it's basically electronics, like metrology, like anything to deal with measurements and diagnostic type equipment. Um, it was the most technical job that they had at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once again, I was always trying to figure out how to learn more. Uh, so I took it, man. I, I, I had a sign for five years. I did that, and then... Almost three and a half years into it, I switched over to uh, uh, 91 Delta, which is, you know, mechanic, you know, so, but I did uh, and what generate. what were you really working on in there, like big helicopters or diesel trucks or? Man, to be honest with you, bro, I got pretty lucky. Uh, well, I like to say I got lucky. Uh, well, I'm, I, because I'm still here, first of all, you know, yeah. so blessing. Glad to have you, bro. Earth uh, needs you. Uh, yeah, man, and uh, when I got in the military, um, once again, you know, once I signed up, that was it. You know, I knew that I was I was there, and ain't no getting out of it. You know right. what I mean? So focus, laser I focus. I focus, man, and uh, I I invested a lot of time in my physical fitness and all of that. So by the time I got to my unit, um, because of my physical fitness and uh, my you know my sharpshooter, I was a sharpshooter. Uh, my records. Uh, my uh, the highest commanding sergeant got my records and she's like man I want him to be my assistant so like within a month of me getting there um, she went ahead and uh, transferred me over to work with her and man I got to do everything bro I got to go everywhere she went I had to be there I had to support her you know uh, provide security things like that and uh, so I had the opportunity to to, to have a kick-ass job in a sense yes right. in a sense yes uh, uh, compared to but it was, it was very demanding like it was right. extremely demanding because uh you know what I mean? You're working with high ranks, you know. Yeah, Every, everything that you see is high ranks, so it's like, yeah. man. That's crazy. But it opened opportunities, bro, because I got to meet a lot of people with power that, you know, that I could reach out to say, hey, man, I want to go to aerosol school. Can I do this? And, man, they would approve me. Yeah. You know, so I did airborne school, man. I did, I did, damn near, I, I did almost everything you could do. Yeah, when that's I was crazy, there. bro. That's, yeah, that's man. dope. Yeah, bro, I, I, uh, I took advantage, man, and thank God, uh, thank God he, he opened up the doors, you know what I mean? Uh, Overall, I know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God. I know God has had his hand, um, you know, in everything that I've done so far to this point. So, yeah, man, thank you. That's, I'm thankful for that, you know. Yeah, man, definitely. Um, so we're proud to have you, man. That's crazy that you had a, such a dope experience so far in life. You're still 30 years young, as <laughs> you like to say. Um, you've been dropping music. Talk to us about what started the music career after doing all this cool ass stuff, jumping out of helicopters and shit. Man, uh, you know, the music is, uh, you know, like I just mentioned, you know, I've always been a fanatic of music. I mean, SPM, he's one of my idols, you know what I mean? Um, so when I was in El Salvador, we would listen to a lot of music that wasn't even Spanish, you know what I mean? We would hear the English music and we would sit there and you know, pretend to know the words and sing along with the, with the music. Uh, so I've always loved music, man. And once I got here, uh, like I said in the beginning, it was a struggle, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of jumping back and forth, you know, from, from place to place. And uh, 
finally we were able to, uh, as we, as me and my siblings got older, we were able to, to you know, support a little bit, my, my mom a little bit more with everything else, and we kind of became stable, and we were able to, uh, to get into a house, man, you know. So once that happened, like, did the military came back, and then even after all of that, I still hit rock bottom, bro. It was a point in time where I ended up back in my mom's living room, you know what I mean, and. Uh, I, you know, I, I got married at, at some point, got divorced, I had a child, you know what I'm saying? So once I had my son, like, now it was really go time. I had duties, you know what I mean? And I was in rock bottom, bro. Um, so, man, I, you know, I you know, I decided to make money, you know what I'm saying? Because I needed money and, and got involved with a lot of things and just, as everything possible. kept... So uh, as I began to, you know, you know, just to come up, man, I got involved with a lot of people. A lot of people were actually doing music, you know what I mean? In the beginning, I like, I really didn't care much for it because I didn't, I didn't see the vision. But, uh, but after meeting a, a good friend of mine, in fact, he's, uh, he's actually, uh, I think he's still signed to TSF. Shout out Rico Bleasy, man. Shout uh, out to the boy. Uh, after I met him, man, one time we were just kicking it in his patio, man. We were chilling, smoking, and uh, he decided to start freestyling. And that that was the first time I'd ever heard him freestyle. You know, it what always mean? starts with a freestyle. Yeah, so bro, it's too. crazy, bro. It's crazy, but you know, but, it, but between me and him, bro, we sat there till like maybe four in the morning, bro. And then uh, that kind of like sparked an idea in me. You know what I'm saying? Cause like I started to think about it, and like, damn, for me not doing anything to all of a sudden jumping into something like this and like, you know, I was kind of doing okay. It just gave me the idea to focus on music. Like, all right, you know, you've done mechanics, you've done electronics, you've done this, you did the military, you you know, all this and this and that that I've been doing. And I was like, man, let's try this, you know what I mean? Let's try this, let's figure out if we can actually do it. So in 2018, <laughs> after a drunk night, man, I just, I told my girl, and I'm like, hey, look, listen, my New Year's resolution is, by the end of next year, I'm gonna be an, uh, I'm gonna be a Houston known artist. You know what I mean? So man, I got to writing, bro. I got to writing music, um, and man, it just took off from there, bro. I wrote my own music. I started focusing on everything that I've been through, um, and then I got to a point where like a lot of my music, if you pay attention to it, it's almost written in a way that it kind of like helps the listener relate to it. You know, I, I when I write my music. I'm inspired by my own life, but at the same time, I write it so that when the listener hears it, he can also say, damn, that shit, that was me, you know, like, they can feel, you know, what I'm saying, or, and like, and in their own mind, create their own story behind the narrative that I have on the track. Um, You're being truthful to your upcomings and trying to bring in how you feel into man, the lyrics. Everything, man, and uh, you know what I mean, so I just want people to be able to relate and in a sense, kind of like also find an escape through the through the vibe, the music, the lyrics, everything that's going on. And uh, as I continue to progress, man, I kind of want to like paint a bigger picture. You know what I mean? So like right now, it's just the beginnings of it. Chapter so, one, the musical mm, crusade, right? Yeah, here. like you said earlier, it's just chapter one. And uh, man, man, little by little, bro, what fueled me the most was that too many doors were closing on me. You know what I mean? Like. I would write music, then I started going to studios and things like that, then I started meeting more artists. And it's like every time I try to do something, it almost sometimes felt like somebody was closing the door on me. You know what I mean? So I went from me going to somebody's studio to me saying, you know what, I'm gonna have my own studio. So I went and bought all the equipment for the studio. I had no idea how to use none of it, bro. I had like pieces of equipment everywhere. They didn't know how to use none of it. The same thing happened to me. Exactly the Man, same thing. You, you get because what I'm saying? I bought the equipment from my boys that were gonna use it, and yeah. nobody came through, and I was stuck with all this thousands worth of equipment that I didn't know how to use. Yeah, man. So, so I I can feel you on that. How man. is that going? <laughs> and it gets pricey, bro. And it gets pricey. Like if there's you want, no limit. Yeah, it gets pricey. It's like bro. fixing a hot rod. It just depends on your budget because mm. there's no limit. If you want the best of everything, you're gonna be you gotta spend it, man. done. You gotta spend <laughs> it. So, but I've been blessed, man. I've been blessed because um, I would buy things that I had no idea what they were. I just knew that it was for music, and I would buy it. 
And in my mind, I already, ha I already had it in my mind that I'm gonna be known. I'm gonna be a known Houston artist, you know? And when I get there, you know, I want everybody to relate. I don't wanna just appeal just to my own kind. I wanna appeal to everybody, you know what I mean? So, bro, I have things in the vault that, that you probably don't even expect from me, you know what I mean? But like I said, as I continue to drop music, which I have on, I have only dropped one song, really. I haven't even dropped, I have like maybe 150 different tracks, bro. Um, but that's what I want to do. I want to just build the character, you know what I'm saying? I want to make it entertaining. Uh, I want to, I want to, I want to be able to have a trajectory, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm taking it very seriously, especially because I've invested so much time of my own self into it from buying the equipment to teaching myself how to use the equipment. And then I've even gone as far as now as uh, with the help of a, of, of a great friend of mine. Uh, shout out DJ X-Ray. Shout out DJ X-Ray, man, from Big shout Boss. Shout out to the boy. Um, I've been able to even come to a point where I can host my own events. You know what I mean? I've had experiences where I go to a show and then, like, I'm not satisfied with the slot they give me or, you know what I'm saying? Or once again, I feel like maybe a door was closed on me. So every it's time it's all I, learning experience, man. Like yeah, back when I was first doing shows, the promoter was the only way. So like, you had to pay for fifteen minutes to be able to go and touch that mic, yeah. and then it's whatever they give you or whatever slot. And then sometimes the sounds all fucked up, the mic is all tragic. So we started doing our own events. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> what I found out, and excuse me, taking a little bit of this to tell you the story. But what I found out was that. Um, when we would focus on the kids or something charitable, mm -hmm. like we did the Toys for Tots, we did the Easter egg hunt for them, we did the school supplies to bring to people to donate, right? Yeah. That's how we would get a lot of people to come in because they would bring something to donate and in return they would have a blast, have a good time. And yeah. then we would put together the DJ, the event, the venue, get with the county. Or we usually would do it at a small town where I'm from because I knew everybody. Mm -hmm. And if I would go and tell everybody with like a bullhorn, like if I'm selling raspas, yeah. and I'm just telling them tomorrow at the park, we're gonna be there. Gotcha. And I go through the whole town telling everybody, people would show up, bro, because there was nothing else to do. You that's, know what I'm saying? That's crazy. But it had to be with a good intention because if it was just to make money, nobody would come show support. Everybody like Exactly. That. Yeah, you no, I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, and plus, man, at the end of the day, really, man, is that that's really what it should always be about. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It should always be about entertaining the community, that, but back. also giving, right. and also giving. I, I think uh, that's that's a good point. A lot of people focus too much on taking, 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 taking. Exactly. And the minute back. they have to give, it's like you know what? Let me close this door. You know what I mean? Exactly. And at the so same you're time, right, man. At the same time, you control the crowd, and then you can. You have your business model up and running for entertainment where you have a lineup. I had a lineup of artists. I had like six six companies, mm. including my own DJ. So if we had a lineup, we could do weddings, quinceañeras, yeah. free, uh, car shows. We could do every. We would go to these small towns and ask the county for a budget for like their county fair or whatever. Mm. So that way I could bring all my artists from... I was in San Antonio at the time. And we would travel to Cotula to Roma, mm. to like little towns where the um, the county had agreed to give us a check to perform for their county fair or whatever. The what? Fair. Yeah. That's dope. And this is back 07, 08 when I was dropping the Checkmate mixtape. So like I did a lot of hiatus in my career because um, I bought the equipment and I didn't know how to use it. So Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. You're not yeah, lying. Bro. But yeah, I'm excited to see where you take this. I know I do consulting services for artists and all that. So like yeah, man. Now we definitely need to tap in. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, you and me have spoke offline before. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, life life is man. Life happens. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, there are certain things that just take priority, and oh, sometimes yeah, you just sure. gotta take time. Definitely. Um, but yeah, man. I'm I'm slowly. I think this year I should reach my last goal that I've given myself as a, you know, in my in building myself you know i gave myself different faces to this you know i'm not rushing into it uh, and it's gonna take time bro when yeah. i first started i gave myself five years you know how yeah. fast those five first five years <laughs> bro, passed i great. was like i needed another 10 15 it's you know great, yeah. so like 
it's gonna don't be too hard on yourself like apply pressure yeah but be content with your results even if you see one fan go up yeah because that one fan is gonna love you you see what i'm saying yeah man absolutely uh, absolutely man I, and that's another thing too that you have to be you have to engage you have to engage with people you have to be able to you know what I'm saying to to make sure that your fans are recognized you know what I'm saying in, in any way every time I do anything on the show man shout out to the fans man shout out to <laughs> take the to the fans shout out to the fans I appreciate y'all anybody that been rocking with me since day one man I got people in Ecuador bro shout out Yariel Fro he's in Ecuador man he's been one of I think he was my follower number two bro Hell yeah. and up to this day you I still keep up with him man yeah, yeah. And, and shout out man because you know at the end of the day you know music is music and, and and it's beautiful and everything. But at the end of the day, people actually, it's a decision they make when they're like, you know what, today, I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna listen to such and such music. You know, let's give this man a play today, you know what I mean? Like, so, so for fun. anybody that's out there, man, and giving us play, man, I appreciate it, man, for real, for real. Yeah, and everybody that you connect with, because sometimes you'll find a song and you don't even know this particular artist, but that song connects with you deeply because you're telling the truth. And that's what I like about artists like yourself, that when, you're on the track, there's a truth in it. It's not just to try to get streams or to try to get likes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there are there are certain tracks that you have to make that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because yeah, if you're going to make a, like, for example, if I'm going to make a song for the club, right? you know, you know, there's a certain... It's not going to be too it's technical. Certain, yeah. yeah. It, it's, a, it's a target. You know, exactly. you're targeting the people that go to the club that are going to go drink, that want to see Ash Shake and yeah, things like exactly. this. Exactly. So, of course, you know, there's certain, there's certain things that, that, you know, if you're going to commercialize a song, you have to be specific in the, in the market you're targeting. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? So, to this point... Um, I think for the majority of my music, uh, it's been more for it's, it's been more of a passion for me. Like I, I've I'm doing it more for the passion of. I want to be able to put out content out. I wanted to show myself that I could create content that was you know that I would enjoy. First of all, right. you know what I mean? Like uh, you know, I think it's been sometimes months that I'll go, maybe like two months that I've gone, bro, that I listen to nothing but my music, and and since it's so much of it, like it's it's rarely that I get one that repeats and repeats, but you know, I do have my favorites, obviously. But I've gotten to that point where I'm like, where I think to myself, like, damn, I could probably have a little radio station now. You know what I mean? So now I'm, I'm focused on the business side of it. Mm -hmm. Now my, my next goal is the business side of it and uh, also completing my, uh, this will be my second uh, music video. I produce my own music videos as well. Like, oh. I got my own cameraman. Uh, we record in 8K quality. Um, and I've been teaching myself how to work with the softwares and you know and my background in the military doing all the electrical stuff learning all that terminology bro is actually advanced me so much in this because it's dealing it with frequencies sense. you know what I mean like when you're doing with music you're dealing with sound waves you know what I mean which is electrical frequencies exactly so man it all it all clicked Blends. in for me man yeah it all clicked in for me so I'm lucky in, in that way that I can view music that way and understand exactly what I'm doing to it technically. And then when I hear it, like, you know what I'm saying, I can tweak it a lot better than, or at least to what I like, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't even know if it's mastered correctly or not. Yeah. From everything I've learned. As long as, this is what I tell people, as long as you're comfortable with it and you feel good about it, then you should be able to push it from there because 